there, and welcome to another episode of Strange Times Poetry Broadcast. I'm coming to you live from the Poetry Bookshelf to bring you three uplifting poems, one by a famous author, one by a friend, and one by myself. And if you haven't watched Strange Times before, please check out and like our Facebook page uh, so you can get all updates about when the show goes live and anything else new that we have on our docket. Um, Today I'm going to be reading you three poems about strange praise. You know, we've all been at home, if, if we're able, and, you know, getting to know the four walls of our space and the people who we maybe were not always confined in those spaces with, we are now spending all the time with. And I would say sometimes that can be frustrating, but also there's a lot of strange joys and strange praise that comes out of those moments, whether it's a new way that you've finagled to cope with you know, the long lines to the grocery store or, you know, some, some other trick that you've picked up that you never did before, um, can be strange, but it can also be wonderful. Um, so the first poem I'm reading is by Andrea Cohen. Furs, from Furs, Not Mine. I have many of her books. This is one of her earlier ones, and it's by um, it's put out by Four Way Books. You should definitely get this one from Four Way Books directly. I've put the information in the description. Um, and the poem that I'm going to read by Andrea Cohen is called "The Wages of Peace." And if you think about it, it's the opposite of the wages of war. The wages of peace. I miss my enemy. My rifle misses aiming and missing. My trigger finger, triggerless, isn't happy. Hapless, it busies itself, fingering cheery photos of my dead. I'm there among them. I'm walking beside my shoes. It was a mistake to kill my enemy, a tactical error, short-sighted. What can I do now but send my widow to his, begging forgiveness? So I love how this poem kind of makes a reversal, right, of the of waging war to waging peace. And the idea that um, killing that killing my enemy was a short-sighted tactical error that the speaker would miss their enemy, um, I think is is kind of brilliant and also kind of funny. Um, and this sort of reversal of thinking about enemies and praising enemies um, is why I included this poem among strange praise. Um, and I also think, I think I also identify with some of that, I mean, that restless feeling. I think all of us are feeling a little restless if we're home and certainly some folks are feeling restless and are leaving their homes, which is not great. Um, so, you know, that kind of the trigger finger triggerless, I feel like that I, that we're all feeling a little bit of that, this now, but she puts it into such an amazing context of the poem. Um, so that was Wages of Peace. All right. Yeah. I love all her poems and I think she has, she has a very straightforward writing style. Someone's asking me, you know, what books should I start reading? I've been watching this. What should I, what should I now start reading? And I definitely recommend Andrea Cohen because I think that the depth of her poems is on par with the most complicated and sometimes deeper than the most complicated poem you could find. But her writing is very sort of crisp and straightforward and it's easy for someone completely new to um style of poetry that um it would be easy to just sort of get into what she's saying which is good you know many styles teach their own um the next poem that i'm going to read is by sharon dolin and it's from her book manual for living um i actually met Sharon through reviewing her book, which I think is kind of an interesting way to become friends with someone. Oh, I've read your work. I'm now going to criticize it. (laughs) Nice to meet you. Um, But what I loved about this book, one of the projects, there's multiple projects in this book, but one of the projects is taking um, Epicurus's advice for living in a certain sort of lifestyle that's both understanding pleasure, it's very instructive, um, And it's sort of taking that and then responding to it with poetry in ways that both agrees with, but I think also sometimes undermines or questions this uh, Epicurean model, Um, which is also interesting because poetry is often 
contemplative, suggestive, but it rarely says, live like this, but a book called Manual for Living, many of the poems in here are very direct and instructive, or at least that's sort of the style that they're written in, which is also kind of an interesting uh, mode for poetry to take on. Um, so this poem that I'm going to read is called Just This, and a big part of this poem is the patterning and the language and you'll see how that works, but it is also a poem of praise. Not the patter of collide, not the warp of lean, not the click of revive, not the downpour of mean, not the curls of worry, not the brown of prowl, not the tale of sorry, but the flame of now. Not the kiss of clever, not the lash of forever, not the mint of comply, not the dirge of deny, not the needle of haste, nor the wristwash of chase, nor the fear of dare, not the cuticle of rare, not the fences of morn, not the nethers of scorn, not the omen of bowmen, not the barrow of shadow, not the harrow of alarm, not the widow of gaze, not the praise of arms, but the arms of praise. I just love what she does with the language here. I actually didn't even realize the first time I read it that it was rhyming, but reading it out loud, I hear it much stronger. Um, and just how these words, you know, the wristwatch of chaste, how they kind of fold into each other and have parts of each other. Um, it just in, just in its praise of language, this poem is great, but then it's sort of saying all these worries and... Um, you know, the harrow of alarm, not those things, but the flame of now and the arms of praise, opening our arms in praise. All right. And our last poem for Strange Praise is from Ye Good Old Evolution of Parasites. Um, this poem <laughs> was written in praise of a parasite um, called the Sand Flea, which does not, it's a parasite that lives on your skin and if you've lived in a warm hot climate somewhere um, you would probably have experienced them they kind of they live in the dust and they attach onto your skin you have to take them off in a less than comfortable way um, and what's also interesting about them is that they were said to have spread been spread all over the world by Christopher Columbus and other sort of European explorers because these sand fleas were not originally in, you know, in America, in the New World, um, even in South America, but they were spread by these um, these explorers from their origin to lots of different places in the world when they were on their ships, um, and you know, Columbus in his diary describes the outbreak of sand fleas um, being so intense that uh, he wanted to amputate his sailor's feet because they were covered in the sand fleas. All right, and on that note, um, so this is a poem somewhat in praise of this sort of fight back against <laughs> colonization and also just wonder at this extremely weird creature. The sand flea. What do you say, born on the dust? This is when you tear into life between the skin and meat of my toes, a tongue to my blood. In two weeks, you grow full in that cave, pushing, a black pupil in the eye of your egg sac, your vulva, your one pipeline to air, waiting for love. I carve you out with the knife, your hundred children blooming, white from my skin, dust to ethanol, and a match. I think part of the praise of this poem is the idea of just tearing into life, being born as being as tearing into because they have to burrow into the skin a bit of an act of power and a little bit of violence but kind of um kind of <laughs> not delicious is not the right word but <laughs> it's just so it's just so active so proactive tearing into life sometimes I want to tear into life um seems like sort of carpe diem anyway I hope that you are <laughs> seizing the day like a sand flea, seizing, seizing this new world that we're in and making the best that we can make of it as it is for now. Um, and of course, you know, taking solace when you need to take solace. Um, thank you for joining me. Stay safe, stay sane, and good night. Bye!